Hello everyone, I'm Peter Bauer and welcome to Pete's Lab. Today we will continue our uh, series of uh, short lectures or vignettes on specific uh, subjects related to groundwater and brownfields and today uh, we're going to discuss sediment size class and sieve mesh uh, openings. Uh, please get your handout, uh, sieve mesh openings and sediment size class, ready so you can follow along and also watch the demonstration. Uh, if you do not have a handout, uh, please uh, pause the video and go to our website and print out uh, the handout. Today's lecture on sieve mesh openings and sediment size class falls under a larger subject heading that we might call particles. Particles are just pieces of matter, chunks of matter that we find in the environment. And the particles we have in front of us today, we have pieces of stone and rock, and what we might call mud or sand. Um, there are many words we can use uh, to describe particles. Mud, sand, gravel, uh, dirt, sediment, alluvium, loess, and so forth. Many, many different terms, but they all are... Uh, categories of the uh, overarching subject called particles. We have a word for this in uh, geology called regolith, R-E-G-O-L-I-T-H. Lith, of course, comes from the Greek root uh, lithos, meaning stone, and rego comes from also another Greek word uh, for uh, blanket. So these are the unconsolidated, loose material particles that blanket the surface of the earth. One of the most important things that one can do when we're looking at these particles, understanding how they move and are shaped in the environment, is to analyze their sizes. And uh, the sieves that we have here uh, allow us uh, to do just that, at least for certain sizes of uh, particles. Sieve mesh openings are seen here. You can see that the mesh is really a kind of window screen, a very finely woven stainless steel grid. And each of those openings is machined to very precise uh, tolerances so that um, you will see on your handout uh, the US, uh, US standard sieve mesh numbers and the next column which says opening in millimeters. Our sieves, and there are many, many uh, different uh, sizes of sieves, and our sieves have been very carefully uh, selected to correspond to some very important things that we'll talk about in a second. But if you look uh, at the front of this, you will see that we have the number 10, the number 18, the number 35, the number 60, the number 120, and the 230 mesh sieves, and then a pan, uh, at the, a pan at the bottom. Now let's talk about each of these specifically. The number 10 mesh sieve, which we see here, has an opening of 2 millimeters. You'll also notice on your handout uh, the, along the left-hand column a ruler uh, showing uh, numbered centimeters and then of course uh, each of those centimeters divided into 10 millimeters. So here we have a uh, 2 millimeter uh, opening. Uh, the number 18 mesh sieve, uh, finer, uh, has a 1 millimeter uh, opening. And we'll begin to see now as we go to the 35 mesh sieve that the openings are decreasing by uh, a factor of 2, each being one half the size of the previous one. So here we are, the number 35 mesh sieve at uh, 0.5 millimeters. We'll also now see the 60 mesh sieve, 0.25 uh, millimeters, 120 mesh sieve, uh, very fine screen. Perhaps you can see me through the screen, 0.125 millimeters. This is uh, about the thickness of a human hair, 125 micrometers, 0.125 millimeters, and the 230 mesh sieve is at 0 0.0625 um, millimeters. These 
numbered sieves correspond to some very important sediment size classes. For instance, if we take the number two millimeter of the number 10 mesh sieve with two millimeter openings, we see that it sits exactly at the boundary between what we call gravel and sand. So that if we pour particles in here, of course, and shake it, the larger particles will remain on top and all of those would be gravel. Anything that comes through would be sand uh, or mud. But let's stop for a second and talk a little bit uh, about uh, gravel. Granules, of course, uh, by reading the chart, you can see are bigger than two millimeters, but smaller than four millimeters in size, way down at the uh, bottom of your uh, ruler. I have some granules uh, here, uh, two to four uh, millimeters. Next, we can see that pebbles are from four to 64 uh, millimeters, and I'm going to mark this on the uh, chart so you can see the range of uh, sizes. And I have here a fairly small pebble and uh, some successively larger ones with this uh, uh, pebble being about the biggest uh, that you could get. So pebbles are good for throwing. The next size is from 64 millimeters to 256 millimeters and these are called cobbles. And I will mark that on here. So bigger than 64, that is bigger than about that width, and smaller than 256 um, millimeters. Uh, here, for instance, I have uh, well a cobblestone. And cobblestones uh, were hand cut to very specific uh, dimensions. And indeed, uh, cobblestones are within this range of 64 to 256 uh, millimeters. Uh, here's another particle that is uh, cobble in size. Uh, this is a piece of quartz. And here's a rounded metamorphic stone found on a beach, but again, uh, of cobble size. And then anything bigger than 256 is what we call a boulder. Uh, for instance, uh, we can see here uh, this large uh, boulder. Obviously not the largest boulder, but it does exceed 256 millimeters a large piece of uh, Barton uh, ore uh, for mining garnet. Okay, the next thing that we can do once we see that uh, um, these uh, sieve, sieves are, uh, correspond to precise uh, sediment size classes is take a look at the sand sizes, which this sieve set is primarily designed to be used. We can see that number 18 at one uh, millimeter is very coarse uh, sand. Uh, we can see that the number 35 will um, collect coarse sand. We will see that the number 60 at 0.25 millimeters will collect medium sand. 120 will collect fine sand. And the 230 mesh sieve will collect very fine sand. Anything that comes through the 230 uh, mesh sieve will pass through the boundary between sand and mud and will be collected in the in the pan. Mud, of course, if you can uh, look at your chart, you'll see consists of two size classes, silt and clay, and analysis of silt and clay uh, requires uh, the use of some other techniques by pipette or uh, hydrometer. Uh, here, for instance, is a big jar of uh, mud from the Hudson River. Uh, well over 99.9% .9 of this is all smaller than sand. So in the uh, mud category, silt and the very finest particles, which we call um, clay. Okay, well, we're ready to do what uh, we would call a qualitative analysis of a sand that I have uh, here. Uh, most everyone, uh, even without uh, looking at this uh, chart, uh, has a feeling for 
uh, what sand is. You go to a beach to sit on uh, sand. You don't go to the beach uh, to sit in the mud. Uh, mud, as it turns out, the particles are small enough to fit into the pores of your skin, uh, so they make you dirty. Uh, sand uh, brushes off easily and is comfortable. On the other hand, you don't go to the beach to sit on gravel uh, unless you're into pain. So I'm pouring this sand in the top of this uh, sieve and we're now ready to do a qualitative uh, analysis uh, of this uh, sand. Now we could have weighed the sand uh, beforehand. In fact, uh, we'll demonstrate that uh, to you later. Uh, the really specific quantitative results for this sand. But just to demonstrate the use of the sieves, there are machines that will shake these uh, for an official amount of uh, time. Um, but I do the uh, shake and tap routine. I shake these, tap them a few times, shake and tap. And it gives us a qualitative uh, idea of the results. So we'll move away some of these particles. And let's demonstrate the results. Indeed, uh, we have some gravel on the number 10 mesh sieve. And if we look at it, we actually will find a particle here that looks like it might be the smallest uh, pebble. The next, the number 18 mesh sieve, shows that we do have some very coarse sand. And uh, indeed, it has a very coarse feel to it. The next sieve, number 35 mesh, shows you a significant quantity of coarse sand. Then we have medium sand on the number 60 mesh sieve. So far that pile seems to be the biggest. Number 120 mesh sieve, very fine sand, significantly smaller pile. The very fine sand, an even smaller pile. And if we look in the pan, uh, indeed there is a very small amount of what we would call mud. So we can see from this analysis that uh, clearly three quarters, uh, maybe even more uh, of the sand is coarse and medium sand, uh, very small amount of gravel, uh, very, very small amount of mud. Uh, the end members, very fine sand and very coarse sand uh, uh, in limited uh, quantities. So anyway, this is a uh, demonstration of the uh, sediment uh, size classes as generated by our set of sieves using these stainless steel wire meshes uh, with specific openings in millimeters. Thanks. See you again soon.